Hi and welcome back. This time we're going to do the Hello World application. To get the same result, so that when we click on the button we'll display text on the screen. But this time we're going to go about it a little bit differently. Xcode 4 has some built-in tools now that can save us a little bit of code typing and can do some automation for us. So we're going to look at a more automated version of the Hello World app. So to start I'm going to create a new Xcode project and these steps are going to be the same as our basic Hello World. So we'll do a view based application. I'm going to give it a name. So we can call it Hello Auto. And I'm just going to put it on my desktop. Okay, and I'm going to go right into the, the nib file, and that will take us into Interface Builder. And we're going to build the interface just like we did in the first Hello World, so I'm not going to get into a lot of details about going through this. I'm just going to put a label on and change our text to click me and I'm going to drag on a label and I'm going to remove the text off of the label because what we want to do is we're going to replace the text that's in the label with something after the click me button is um, clicked. So again same process that we had gone through to build our basic Hello World application before. Now the last time what we had to do was from here we had to switch into the header file. We added some code in here so that it could recognize what the button was and what the label text was. And then we had to go into the implementation file and define the method that should happen when the button was clicked. But with this version of Xcode, uh, we can automate some of that process. So again, I'm going to switch back into the interface builder. I'm going to take off the utilities over to the side. And I'm going to switch to what's called the automatic or the assistant editor. And so we can still see our interface builder here but on the side we have our header file being displayed. Now remember in the header file is where we create the objects and before we went in here and we typed in our code to define our label and our button objects. But this time in Xcode we're going to use the tools. I'm just going to move down to the button and I'm going to hold down the control key and while I'm holding down control key, I'm going to click and drag into my interface or into the controller H file and release. And we have a window that pops up asking us what kind of connection we have. This is an IV outlet connection. And this is our button, so we're going to give our button a name. So I'm going to call this the Click Me button and connect. And you can see that now it added some code directly into our header file. It added a user interface button object and it defined our button name that we specified in the pop-up. And remember this asterisk is a pointer to this click me button object. But it also added something new that we didn't look at in the previous Hello World example that we did. And what's going on here is, well the property keyword here is telling the compiler that uh, this is a property of an object. And this information inside the parentheses is telling Xcode how it should deal with the memory management of this object. 
we'll get into memory management in a lot more detail in a future session. So right now, just um, don't get too wrapped up in this. This is an IB outlet, interface builder outlet. And the UI button, object, click me button is what is being affected by this property. So again, remember an IB outlet is something that is used to set up an outgoing connection from the implementation code to the view. So this is the view and we're going to be connecting this in our implementation file. Next I'm going to do the same thing with the label. We're going to connect the label to our header file. Now if you can't find this, moving your mouse around it pops over to a hand and you'll know to click. Uh, and another trick is uh, we can expand this center column here and under our objects view we can expand that and we can see our different objects by clicking on them. So I can click the label object and have it pop up. So let's close that back down. Uh, now I want to connect this to my header file, so I want to make sure I'm back, you know, click back in the window so that the header file shows up again if you were back in this other view. And I'm going to control drag and again into my H file and release the mouse. And we have, uh, again, it's a, an outlet and we have to give our label a name. So we'll say response label is the name of our label and we're going to connect it. And it did a similar thing. It added the UI label object and it created a new object with our name that we assigned. And again it also added the property and specifying how Apple should deal with the memory management of this. Now I'll also switch over to show you once we finished working in the H file we also had to go into the implementation file and put some information into that. So I'm going to switch over to the M file which is our implementation file and look at the code that was automatically added here. Now synthesize what Synthesize does is it tells the compiler to actually create the property that we declared in the header file. So in the header file here, we defined the property, click me button, and response label, but it doesn't actually become created until we're in the implementation file. Remember, M is for implementation. So this is taking these and actually creating them and actually making a space for them in memory. And the other code that it added for us is under the dialog function. We have the click me button release and response label release. And again, we haven't really talked much about memory management. It'll be a very important concept to keep track of as we build our apps. But whenever you create something, you must remove it from memory. So if it's something that you created, then you have to clean up, do your garbage collection, and remove it from memory. Apple will actually reject your apps if memory management is not handled properly. So if you create it, then you need to destroy it. So uh, that's another one of these things that automatically happened when we created the connection from Interface Builder uh, was that it also recognized that since we were creating it, it's something that has to be removed. So it's something that you need to keep track of, but in this case, it was added for us in here. So release is going to destroy uh, these two objects from memory. Okay, so we have everything connected together and we have our code in here specifying you know our buttons and our labels. So I'm going to run it and test it. 
we have it compiling and linking. So we have our little message, build succeeded, which is good. Okay, and then our simulator pops up and the click me button works, but there's nothing happening here with our text. So why would that be? Why do we have anything showing up? Well, when you think about it, I'm going to close my simulator. We don't have anything in our code. We didn't specify what should happen when the button is clicked. So we haven't defined anything that should happen here. We've only defined that we have a label and we have a button and that it should be committed to memory and released from memory, but we didn't specify what should happen when the button is clicked. So we need to do some more, a little bit more with this to get it to work. So I'm going to go back into my nib file and we also define our methods in our header file. So I'm going to control click again from my button into my header file. But this time, instead of just saying that this is a button, we want to add an action to this button. So we're going to change the connection type to an action, which will create an IB action, Interface Builder Action. And um, this will be the name of our, our method. So let's call it uh, button pushed. So we'll have a button pushed method. And an ID is a type that is in Xcode. We'll talk about that more in detail later. So we're going to connect them up. Touch up inside is what you actually do with most buttons to um, recognize a click. So we'll choose connect. And then you can see that we have our method, our IB action button pushed method. And now in the implementation file, last time is where we wrote code for uh, the button pushed method and told it what to do when that was clicked. So let's go into the implementation file. Let's see, we still have our synthesize and the dialog. This is other code that's automatically added by Xcode. Now if you go all the way down to the bottom, you can see it put in um, an empty method for us. This is our button pushed method, but there isn't anything in it. So it doesn't do everything for us. We still have to go in and define what we want it to do when this button is pushed. So when the button is pushed, we want the response label text to be changed to something else. So I'm just going to go in here and put in a little code. We'll say, now the name of ours is response label. So we're going to say response label. My autofill is there so I don't have to type it all in. Response label dot. Now this red button is popping up because of the settings my computer or my program is set for. Even though I haven't finished typing it in, it's saying there's a warning, there's something wrong, there's something wrong. Don't worry about those until after you've finished typing in your code. But sometimes they can get annoying. So we're saying our response label dot text is going to be equal to, and we're just going to put in a little text string, just like we did before, hello Xcode. And our little red button went away here, so everything sh looks okay. So now I'm going to run it. Build succeeded is always good. We have our click me button, and when we click, our text shows up in the label box.